I have to thank the person in the audience who asked that question because you finally got a question that all of us can agree on. It is a really bad policy. Uh, it did not work anywhere in the world that it was tried. It didn't work in London. Uh, it would have been a worse burden for this community than any other community in the city because the people who go up to the country every summer would have to drive through, drive up the FDR and would have had to pay the toll just for driving through the city, not even stopping off. Uh, the Hesed organizations, as David said, would have been penalized and they paid money out of their own pockets to do the Hesed that they do and they would have been really, really badly penalized. We shouldn't be doing that. It doesn't work. The mayor in London told the mayor of New York it doesn't work. And I don't understand why the mayor insisted on imposing another tax on the citizens of the city. I'm going to ask to acknowledge, and I um, hope I do the pronunciation properly. Uh, welcome to the 49th Assembly District Republican District leaders, Fred Martorell. And, um, say it again? Thank you. Lucretia Regina Potter. Thank you very much for being here. And I thought I could pronounce anything. Thank you. Um, we continue now with the next round from our panel, and that means uh, Ali Chomsky directed at David Greenfield. Aside from writing the letter to the commissioner, what other actions will you take to curb the problem of parking tickets? Yeah, thank you. That's, that's actually an excellent, an excellent question. But, you know, the, I actually do want to focus first on the letter to the commissioner because it's a perfect example in terms of the style of how I'm going to approach these kinds of problems, right? So the problem was, just for those people who aren't familiar with it, this is a very frequent problem we have in the community, and that is that it's impossible to find parking. And I myself, uh, Bar Hashem, I get home very late at night, and what I do, what I do is something that many people do, and that is I park on the avenues. Because by the time I get home, there's no longer a requirement to feed the meter. By the time I leave in the morning for chakras, it's too early, so I don't have to feed the meter either. The problem with this is really very simple. And that is on Friday afternoons, right, people in the community who observe Shabbos, they're getting tickets. Because this week, for example, Shabbos starts around 5 o'clock. And even if you put in meters for the, the quarters in the meter for an hour, what happens is that you can get a ticket from 6 to 7 o'clock. And unfortunately, I can tell you that walking the streets of Bar Park this Shabbos, I saw many people did get tickets. And so one of the things that we did was we immediately sent a, a, a letter to the commissioner asking the commissioner for a very practical solution. And this is very important, right? Because it's very easy to say, we're going to change the law so that only in Borough Park, only from McDonald Avenue to 13th Avenue, from 60th Street to, to uh, uh, 39th Street, uh, in these areas, you will not have to pay. Thank you. In these areas, you're not going to have to pay after 5 o'clock. But that's not very practical. So the practical solution that I came up with was that the city has an interest in installing muni meters. In fact, they're working all around the city to install these muni meters. Muni meters are great because Council of Central Felder passed a bill actually that says you can go up to five minutes longer on a muni meter and you won't get a ticket. Also, they take credit cards. I don't know about you, but I'm always out of quarters whenever I pull up and park at a parking spot. And so the nice thing about the muni meter is that it's programmable. And so what I asked the commissioner to do was to program the muni meter so that on Fridays, anybody who wants can have an option for up to three hours to pay the actual quarters. And that's important because we don't want to ask anybody for special treatment. We only want reasonable accommodation. This is a practical solution. And so this is just one idea, but the ultimate problem comes down to this. We've studied the numbers and we've looked at it. The bottom line is there's way too many parking enforcement agents in our community and they're out of control. Now let me tell you this. There's a crazy statistic. Crazy, crazy statistic. There are 8.3 million people who live in New York. Seniors. Children, parents, single people, all kinds of people. The city of New York gave out, in 2008, 9.9 .9 million parking tickets. That's insane. That's more than every person in the city. And the answer is very simple. When I get to the city council, I'm just going to ask for equity. I'm going to ask for something that everybody can agree to. And that is, we're going to pass a law in New York City. That's very simple and very fair. There should be equal amounts of parking enforcement agents in Brooklyn, in the Bronx, and in Queens, because we're sick and tired of paying New York City bills by our parking tickets. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's very interesting that 
uh, uh, Mr. Greenfield talks about uh, style, because what, uh, what I don't think he realizes is that there's a far more effective way to get the job done that's going to involve getting the entire community together. And personally, I don't see how it's special treatment when it's making sure city government works for our community. And so when we're talking about working with the community boards, working with community groups, because for instance, at Community Board 14, I can tell you that many years ago, the Community Board developed a sanitation plan that respected the fact that people cannot put garbage during Shabbos out on the street. And so they changed the regulations in order for us to accommodate the people in our community who observe Shabbos and would not be able to do that. So when it comes to changing media regulations, by all means we should be looking to accommodate the people of this community in a way that respects their own personal obligations. There's nothing wrong with the head of the city hall assembly. Now, what ways will we reduce the fines? What ways are we going to accommodate the fact that it costs too much to live in the city when you do have aggressive ticketing agents out there. Well, I firstly have to applaud the work of Councilman Simka Felder for changing the sanitation regulations, for changing the parking meter regulations. But I must warn you, as great as the muni meter idea sounds, the city also has a program where they're trying to find another way to milk you for all your work. And it's, it's a form of congestion pricing for parking. They like muni meters because what they can do with it is decide during peak hours of the day, they will charge you more. When you're doing business for your family, whether you're just working and doing business for your own uh, small business or whatever it may be, they will charge you more to park on commercial trips than others. We must be very, very careful about muni meters and allowing the city government to decide that sometimes it should cost you significantly more to park on an avenue than another time. So, working with the commissioner, but more importantly, empowering the community through the community board, empowering community groups, empowering our district to make sure that the regulations fit the needs and the lifestyles of the people of our community is no disgrace and we should be proudly going to City Hall and making that argument to bring home what needs to be done for the people of our district. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With all due respect to my colleagues up here, I think we're looking at it in the wrong uh, way. Most of the agencies that issue summonses used to be public safety or health safety agencies. They were out there looking at the public safety and the health safety of the community. Today, it is just a revenue generating uh, agent. All these agencies are revenue generating. I know that we have traffic agents that lay in wait uh, when cars pull into an intersection and can't make it through the intersection, and, and they're hiding behind cars, jump out and summon these people. Why aren't they directly directed? My mother, who was just next this summer, uh, she was 101 years old, but two years ago she was 99 years old. She was legally blind. She had macular degeneration. On a Sunday, I was visiting her in the winter one day, and I put the garbage out for her because the next day was a sanitation day. And we got a $100 summons. And why did we get that $100 summons? Because I didn't realize that you can't put the garbage out until 5 p.m. on the night before a collection. I put it out at 2 o'clock because it was the winter time. My mother was legally blind and she was 99 years old and I was trying to be a very helpful son. She got a $100 sum. I wrote a letter to the, uh, to the Environmental Control Board and what they told me was, well, why don't you hire someone to take out the garbage on time? I mean, that's not an answer. That's not public safety. That's not health safety. That's gotcha. And they've got to stop.